If you're in the market for an NES Classic, chances are you're going to be waiting a while. But today on The Modern Inventor, I'll show you how you can build your own for about the same price. Now don't let its small size fool you. This NES packs a punch. Not only is it not limited to just 30 games, it's also not limited to which console you use. It'll play Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, Arcade, Sega, and much, much more. You can also install Kodi, which will turn your NES into a smart TV, which you could use to stream all your favorite TV shows and movies. And because it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it's not limited to cord remotes. In fact, it'll connect to just about any wireless remote you have. So let's get started. I got this $10 remote online. The more retro, the better. You'll also want to pick up a Raspberry Pi 3. It's basically a mini computer for about 35 bucks. And a micro SD card to hold your games. You might already have one of these lying around. And if you're anything like me, you probably have a whole drawer full of these micro USB phone chargers. Just make sure it's the right amperage. The first thing we need to do is configure the memory card. Plug it into your computer, and we're going to download a few things. The first one is RetroPie. This is an amazing operating system with a bunch of emulators pre-installed. Download the latest version and be sure to thank these guys, they've done a good job. Then you'll need Win32 Disk Imager. This is how we'll get the image onto your SD card. We also need a way to unpack the image. 7-Zip is my program of choice, but you can use anyone you like. Just open up the image with 7-Zip and export it onto your desktop. A little movie magic later, and we're just about done. Open up Win32 Disk Imager and select your image. Now, make sure you have the right drive here. It'd be pretty bad if you didn't. Hit right, and you might get some scary pop ups. Just ignore them. If this doesn't work, be sure to format your disk and try it again. Now the hardest part is done. Now if you're making an NES, you gotta have a cool case to go with it. Don't worry, if you don't have a 3D printer, I'll leave an affiliate link below where you can purchase an already made case. I'll also leave a link to where you can find the 3D print files that I use for those of you who need them. After printing my parts, I give them a light coat of paint just to give them that extra NES classic look. I also used a vinyl cutter to cut out the logos and a few other details. Now it's just a matter of putting it all together. Insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi 3 and place the Raspberry Pi 3 into its case. I think the decals really add a lot to that NES stick. You could just use electrical tape, but I cut these strips out of vinyl. Put the top cover on add a few screws, and now we're ready for the final touch. I used a piece of scotch tape to transfer this logo. It was a little difficult to peel, but in the end, I think it was worth it. And there you have it, your very own DIY NES Classic. Now it's time to put some games on. Let's start by plugging in your remote. Plug in an HDMI cord to your screen and the power. 
The first time it boots up, it might take a while. I sped it up here for your benefit. Once the system's done loading, you'll be presented with this screen to set up your gamepad. Press and hold any button, and then press the corresponding buttons to program them. If you don't have a certain button, just press and hold any button, and it'll skip it. Once you're finished setting up your controller, it'll take you back to the main RetroPie menu. Select RetroPie, and we've got one more thing we need to do. Go down to Wi-Fi, and we're going to connect to the internet. For this, you'll need a keyboard. This is a good time to plug it in. Select the network you want to use, type in your password, and just wait a minute while it connects. And there you have it. Now, let's just load some games. Navigate to your computer's desktop and make sure you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network or this won't work. Click on network and type in backslash backslash RetroPie. If you're on a home network, this will probably get you in. If you're on a secure network, you'll probably get a dialog like this. Go ahead and type backslash backslash and the IP address for your NES system. It'll probably prompt you to log in. Type in pi for the username and raspberry for the password. I recommend you change these for security concerns. Now just click on the ROMs folder and you'll notice it opens up the Raspberry Pi's memory. And here we have a folder for each console. I'm just going to find the ROMs that I want to transfer and select the certain folders that I'd like to copy over. Just drag and drop them and it'll start copying them. Depending on how many games you have, this could take quite a while. Once it's done, you're going to want to restart your Raspberry Pi and you should see all the new consoles available. Click on any of them and it'll take you to the games. And just like that, you're reliving your childhood dreams. Thanks for sticking around. I know this was a little longer build, but I'll tell you what, it's well worth the effort. If you want to learn more about how to customize your DIY NES Classic, watch our other videos. And if you want to learn more about inventing or prototyping, please subscribe to our channel and ring the bell. Thanks for watching.